Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerintrainingexam.com. And in this video, we're going to be review confidence intervals. To define a confidence in interval, we need three key pieces of information. Number one, we need a confidence level, we need a statistic, and we need the margin of error. Now, given these inputs, the range of the confidence interval is defined by the sample statistic plus or minus the margin of error. And the uncertainty associated with this confidence interval is spe specified by the confidence level. Now there are four steps to defining a confidence interval. So the four step process is this. Number one, we need to identify a sample statistic that we will use to estimate a population parameter. So we need to ID a sample statistic that we will use to estimate a population parameter. Now this is either going to be a mean or a proportion. Number two, we select a confidence level. Select confidence level. The confidence level describes the uncertainty of a sampling method. Often we choose 90, 95, or 99 percent confidence levels, but any percentage can be used. Number three, we find the margin of error. Find margin of error. Now the margin of error is calculated as uh, the critical value times the standard error of the statistic and I will uh, be defining both of these terms. And then number four, we need to specify the confidence interval. So number four, we specify or define the confidence interval. And that's going to be defined as the sample statistic plus or mar minus the margin of error. So the standard of error is computed from known sample statistic and it provides us an estimate of the standard deviation. So given a certain uh, statistic, the most common formulas used to calculate the standard error are these. So we're talking standard error formulas. So we're given a statistic and we convert that into the standard error. So say we're given the statistic uh, of the sample mean. The standard error is then calculated as s over the square root of n. Now if we're given the uh, statistic as a sample proportion, p, then the standard error is calculated square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. So these are, these are the two com most common uh, standard error formulas that we'll be using. One's for the sample mean and one's for the sample proportion. Now let's talk about how you define the critical value. How do you find the critical value? Now there's a process to doing this. Uh, the first step is you need to compute alpha. And alpha is equal to 1 minus the confidence level, so 90 
uh, 95, 99 percent, whatever the confidence level is, divided by 100. So that is going to be alpha. Uh, number two, we need to uh, find the critical probability or P star. And P star is calculated as 1 uh, minus, sorry, no divide. It's 1 minus alpha divided by 2. And then next, third step is we need to express the critical value as a T score. So we need to express. critical value as t-score. Now we do this by first finding the degrees of freedom of the problem. Uh, once again this is typically equal to the sample size minus one and then second we need the, uh, the critical t-score we need T star and uh, we get this the critical T score is the T score having degrees of freedom equal to the uh, equal to DF and a cumulative property equal to the critical probability so we go back to the T distribution tables and uh, use those tables to determine what the T the critical T score is so let me run you guys through a quick example of how we would find a confidence interval. So suppose we want to estimate the average weight of a group of men. We draw a random sample of 1,000 from a population of a million men and weigh them. We find that an average man in our sample weighs 180 pounds and the standard deviation of the sample is 30 pounds. Now what would the 95 percent confidence interval be? So we took a sample of a thousand men out of one million, uh, out of one million, and we weighed them, and we got the average that the average man weighed one hundred and eighty pounds, and the standard deviation of the sample was thirty pounds. So let's work through this problem using our four-step process. Number one. We first need to identify a sample statistic. Since we are trying to estimate the mean weight in the population, we choose obviously choose the mean weight in our sample, 180, as the sample statistic. So the sample statistic, in this case, is the mean, and that's equal to 180 pounds. Now step two is uh, we need to select a confidence level and this has already been defined in the problem. They asked us to find the 95% confidence interval. So the confidence level is going to be 95%. Step three. Uh, step three is uh, we need to find the margin of error. And we know that there's a process to doing this. Um, and the first thing is we need to find the standard error. Standard error, SE. And the standard error, since uh, we're using the mean as our sample statistic, is uh, SE is equal to S over the square root of N, which is equal to 30 divided by the square root of 1,000 which is equal to 0.95. Uh, next we need to find uh, T star. So to find T star we first need to uh, compute alpha and we know alpha is equal to uh, 1 minus 95 over 100 because that's 95 is our confidence level and we got 0.05 then we, from alpha we find the crit, critical probability which is p star which is equal to 1 minus alpha divided by 2 
which is equal to uh, 0.975. So now that we have alpha, we, uh, we converted that into P star. Now we need to find the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom, we have um, 1,000 is our sample. So we just go uh, 1,000 minus 1. So we have 999. Nine, nine. And now we need to find the critical value. Um, and the critical value is the t-score having 990 degrees of freedom and a cumulative probability equal to 0.975. So we're taking p star and we're taking 999 back to the t-distribution tables. And we're finding what, uh, what uh, our, our t, our critical t score is t star and we find that in the tables that it's 1.96 now we can calculate the margin of error which again is the critical value critical t value critical value uh, times the standard error which is equal to 1.96 times 0.95 which is equal to 1.86. So that's our margin of error is 1.86. Therefore, the confidence interval for this problem is defined by the sample statistic, 180, plus or minus the margin of error. And the uncertainty is denoted by the confidence level. Therefore, we can be 95% confident that the population mean falls within 180 plus or minus 1.86 pounds. We can be 95% confident because that was our confidence level that the population mean falls within the interval 180 plus or minus 1.86. So that's all I got for you guys today. I uh, hope that's a quick review. You guys, uh, Got a little bit out of that review of confidence intervals. If you have any questions, head on over to engineeringtrainingexam.com and uh, shoot me an email, uh, some feedback, uh, some suggestions or whatnot. And uh, other than that, we'll be talking soon. All right, take care. Bye.